Hello, I am the Sculpting Aquarius. My name is Brian and today I'm going to give a presentation on stone making and clay sculpting. I clay sculpting like this sculpt right here and like the eagle behind me. So uh, first let me show you uh, some of the things that you'll need. These are just plain simple, simple mixing cups, different sizes. All depends on what you need. Of course, there's tongue depressors for mixing sticks. Since you'll be a little bit messy, you'll have uh, paper towels and also gloves. You know, because your hands will get a little messy on this. So, in this bucket here, I have some water, of course, we need something to mix with. And in another bucket over here, off to the where you cannot see, I have a bucket of what they call Ultra Kale or a stone mix. Uh, you could also use things like a plaster of Paris. And most of this stuff you can actually just get at a hardware store or a general store, like the uh, cups. Uh, they sell uh, some mixing cups at the hardware store. Uh, plaster of Paris uh, can be uh, bought at the a uh, local uh, art store if you if you want if you'd like to get it there that's all depends on you um, so now that we got our materials I'd like to get started um, also another thing I'm going to show you is uh we have a mold couple molds here I picked out a couple molds that would actually go with uh, the season of November uh, of course uh, being autumn and everything and Thanksgiving is coming up so uh, first I'm going to do of course, I'm going to get my gloves on so I don't make as much of a mess. I'm going to actually take some of these off here so I have a little bit of room. So I have a cup here I'm going to mix with. going to put some ultra cal into this as you might be able to see it's just a plain white powder and now I'll have uh, get some water here now water tends to go a long way with mixing of this so you don't need a whole lot depending on of course your what you're making Pour it into the cup. And start mixing. And what I like to do is get all the corners of the cup, the sides of the cup and the bottom corner. So I get all the mixture in there, mixed with the water evenly. And what I'm looking for is basically the, uh, like a muddy kind of consistency. And you see me add more water. You could also add more Ultra Cal if you need to do so. Now I'm hoping you can uh, see, see in there. See the consistency of it. Now I have my molds in place already. I always want to make sure your molds are flat against something so they don't tip. Of course if they tip you might spill the contents onto uh, whatever surface you're on. So a good thing, a good practice to also have is uh, if you have any plastic to put down or maybe newspapers even or something that uh, isn't totally important so that when you pour if things happen to uh, get a little bit messier than need be you can uh, not worry about the surface that it goes on to. So what I have, I'm going to just start pouring. Try to get into a little bit of crevice there. I want to pour until it is just about flush with the uh, top of the mold on anything that I'm pouring on.
It seems as though I could use a little more, but that's okay. I could actually do that. Now this takes about a half an hour to cure. So it would be no problem to actually add more without worrying it that it will cure too soon. While I'm making my second batch of uh, Ultra Kill Mix here. Also, when you're doing something like this, you want to also make sure that you have some old clothes on that you don't not worried about messing up or getting stuff on like I have on right now. And making sure I get the whole bottom of the cup and the sides of the cup. Pour a little bit more so I could even uh, even off my pores. All right, now after I get done pouring, I like to give a little shake to all these. So uh, I know what that does is actually flattens out what I did pour. And it also brings up any air bubbles that might be get trapped into there. Of course, then you do something like that. Do the same with this one. And they should actually be good to go at the moment. Now what I do is actually I like to set these, since these are smaller molds, I will let these sit for about a half an hour and these should be cured and popped uh, at that time. So what I'd like to do is actually show you a couple other molds that I like to use. Like this is actually a plastic piece. It's what they call vacuum forming. And it's uh, if you make a mold, a clay mold like this here, with a flat bottom, and you can put the flat bottom and uh, you have this machine, and uh, it folds up like a book. You put a, a sheet of plastic on uh, the top side, the sculpt on the bottom. And uh, once the uh, plastic gets heated up, uh, work and form over the, the sculpture. You clamp it down, press a button, and it'll actually suck out the air. Hence the term vacuum forming. And it'll bring out the details and all the uh, in your sculpt there. And you let that cool and you're able to take it off and pop the, the clay out. And you get something, something like this. And you could do that with uh, pretty much any sculpture that you... That you do. These ones actually here for demonstration purposes I like to get uh, at a, uh, I, there's a candy shop that's not too far from me so I get a couple candy molds so I can demonstrate uh, to an audience or uh, if I have a couple people that I like to try it they could also try it and they won't, don't make too much of a mess and they get to keep whatever they make whenever I do it uh, on, tan, on hand. Another form of uh, mold. Now this is called a uh, silicon mold. As you can see I've already poured uh, some ultra cow into there so it should be actually cured up already and this is actually held together by a, a banding strap. So that because this is actually cut in half so we don't want it to come apart when you pour the ultra cow into it. This is a two-part rubber. 
and the banding straps I believe you can uh, buy them at the hardware stores as well the uh, ultra cal uh, some art stores have it all depends on where you go now the if you do want to get into silicon molding there's also what they call smooth on or Reynolds this is like a, the two part molding you would actually uh, have to mix them together and of course that actually takes a good while to cure that's uh, if you want to get deeper into doing such a such a project you can now these are still uh, of course still curing here so what I'd like to do is actually get into the sculpting a little bit because everything that you see here and what I do here with the stone molds start first starts with an idea and uh, has to go into a sculpt so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my gloves off my gloves are off now with this I like to use which also you could buy at any art store stuff art stores it's what they call Chavant this is a type of clay it comes in actually two colors a brown and a gray uh, there are other forms of clay there's hard clays or soft clays and they come in different colors sometimes too you can go to Michaels and get a lot of different forms of clay as well and of course you could always go online and if you're going to do some clay of course some tools of the trade this is a clay cutter as you see I had a whole block there so you have to shave off a little bit in order to get a little bit of clay to start molding of course some of the tools I don't know if you could see them too well but uh, get different angles and points on them just to give uh, a little bit of definition and uh, some texture I guess now with the sculpting tool the cutter I'm able to get something like this off of the big block and that way, when I come up to this, I can uh, start uh, start molding. Now, if you notice this guy here, he's actually, um, he asks me where I get my ideas from. Well, me personally, I like uh, animations and sci-fi and uh, fantasy, things like that, old mythology. So, of course, I like the, uh, all that, all stuff like that. So, uh, what I normally do is I get us up some pictures of an idea that I might like. Now this will be a recreation of a, a character off of Dragon Ball Z, which is Frieza. And uh, of course I had started him a while ago. And I've been trying to get a little bit here, a little bit there to him. If you've noticed there is little wires that come out of his arms there, that's called armature wire. And with a sculpt, to start a sculpt, usually you could use uh, an empty bottle. And uh, this right here is like a styrofoam ball used as, uh, as filler. And you could also create a pose, whichever pose you like, with your armature wire. And of course, that's all stuff that you've had laying around or an art store that you could use as a filler. And uh, the filler is often used just because uh, if you don't need to have to use that much clay. That's a little bit less clay that you have to use for that technique. And that's, of course, the center of the, this guy right here. And once you have that all uh, into the position that you want, and then what you do is you get that together, position you want, have a thin layer of clay around the, uh, the your base there, and then you can start piling clay on top of that to form the different definitions and different details. Now you can see I got a little bit of a face going there. Uh, his body is uh, pretty much formed up. So with uh, the clay, at least the clay that I use, I like to uh, actually hold it in my hand for a little while, like I've been, I've actually been doing here for a couple minutes, and actually it warms it up so it's a little bit more pliable. That way I could uh, take a little bit off. And 
and I could actually start detailing uh, however I'd like. So let's uh, see if I can't make a couple more details, uh, a couple more abs down here. So at this time, I also want to thank the uh, Makers Fair for, let, uh, for letting me do this, for letting me demonstrate uh, virtually. I also want to thank anybody that clicked on clicked on the uh, little site there to watch my demonstration. So I thank you very much for watching, and thanks, uh, thanks to the uh, Makers Fair for letting me do this. Now this isn't nearly as messy as the uh, the ultra cow making, but uh, it can be a good hobby to get into, of course. All right, so uh, that's basically the, I get the gist of it, how you actually add on. And uh, as you go along, you'll decide to uh, add here, add there, add extra details into there. Now this guy right here is, he might not be exact, but so he's, he'll be a recreation of uh, a Frieza. Uh, one of the forms that I have done and actually completed a little bit is, of course, say hello to my little friend. This is actually uh, my Baby Yoda rendition. <laughs> so, and of course, uh, I have my own uh, my own sculpts as well. I like to compare what I can do to what other people have done throughout the movies as well, so I can recreate and uh, see how good my skills are as well. <laughs> but um, that's basically how the uh, How sculpting works and you can pretty much use any tool you don't really have to use any specific tool like this right here is actually a, uh, a knitting needle so you could actually uh, make some marks into it then you have rounded ones all kind of stuff and uh, you have this one here that could actually uh, Do different things as well. All kinds that we uh, be able to uh, create some detail. And if you don't like it, you can always buff it out. Just like that. Well, sort of. <laughs> but um, yeah, so everything like this uh, helps create the stone molds. What I would do with this, if I wanted to make a statue out of them, is I would use the two part uh, silicone. And I'd be able to pour around them and enclose it so it, uh, of course, all stays there and probably about 16 hours it will cure. And I'd be able to take it off. As a matter of fact, I'll show you with this one here. So I could actually take this off. Let me see here. This is a sculpture that I had made. That's one side, and the inside was this right here. So I could actually pull him out. And it 
looks like that. Your Christmas tree. Huh. So I will put him down there. Now, when you're dealing with the uh, the stone castings, now the small stuff really won't uh, heat up too much. But part of the curing process, and depending on how big uh, your your molds are, it will heat up. Like I said, that is part of the uh, the concept, the uh, the curing process, and that is natural. That it, uh, if you feel it, now these aren't hot, these aren't warm at all. They shouldn't get too hot, but they should be warm to the touch. Now this guy here says he was. Uh, a lot of uh, stone mix he's going to produce a little bit more heat so always uh, be a little bit careful and when uh, handling your stuff there so let's see here I do also want to show you something that I have created a good while ago that I have finished last year I'll show you how what kind of detail there there can be. Of course, this guy uh, did take me a while. Now his filler is actually what they call a bust. More like a mannequin head. Starts off with something like this. That's just a plastic one. That's a styrofoam one there. You can also use stuff like paper mache. Uh, also like expandable foam was another good thing to use for fillers. But it all starts with something like this. And when it gets through, he might not even look like this at all, but like the uh, like the sculpture I just showed you, but uh, it's an example of some filler. And it's actually much lighter as well. If you use a uh, filler, as compared to clay, clay of course will weigh itself down, and you might have some trouble with the weight. So you'd want to sculpt accordingly. Of course, using uh, whatever you see fit there, and of course with experience. With the experience uh, comes, you know, the uh, you know what to do a little bit. And yes, I still make messes from all the time. For well, most of the time, I'm making a mess. What this is here, see, I can't really see it in the light too well. Pikachu. He's actually a two-part plastic. Which is something you something all you could also do. Let's see here. Oh, hey. So some of the things I also want to show you while that is still curing. That once this does cure, you could actually paint them up. Any type of paint will do. These two are acrylic paints. You can see that these are built, you know, Michaels or Walmart or things like that. Paint brushes. You could use oil paints, fluorescent paints, glow in the dark paints. And this is also a form of like a vacuum form. You find this at a cake shop. But I wanted to show you that uh, you can use just about anything. Uh, even if it, you didn't make the sculpt itself, do a little ghost, yeah. <laughs> Since Halloween just passed, now I did create this eagle back here, and as you can see, I had also painted him. I actually just got finished painting him not too long ago. So that's here. Show you this one here. Uh, I have done this one earlier as well. So, like I said, it's ve almost Veterans Day, so I figured a flag is usually good. 
this is how you attempt to pop it out. So something like that. And you could paint this red, white, and blue. You could paint it any color you want, really. You can uh, use UV paints and put it under a black light so it glows at night. But that's something like you get from here. It's the same kind of concept. Let's see if I can get one of these other ones out here. Looks like they're still, they're still curing, so what I will have, just in case it didn't cure, with this mold here, as you can see, kind of sort of what I've Gotten in there, as you see, I'm making a mess. Right. Is and they all pop out. The pumpkin, acorn, maple leaf there. Transform them. Of course, this is all painted up so you can see what they look like. Yeah, little pumpkin there. And this is a good activity with uh, kids. It's not too uh, not too hard to do. Uh, kids should be able to love it. Um, I've been at a few maker fairs myself, uh, showing kids how to do this, and they always get to keep what they what they make. And uh, I've been around. I do uh, uh, private affairs as well, teach people how to do it, and uh, they have so, some fun with it. They get to make whatever they want. Like I said, I usually bring the uh, uh, the the cookie molds, the candy molds out uh, for demonstration purposes. And it's a little bit faster than being able to sculpt something and and create. And people have uh, have a little bit better knowledge. I guess this is uh, Thanksgiving there. My little Tom. Now this guy back here, I did make him. Move the paper towels there. I did make him. It took me a while. And like I said, he uh, had some heat when he gets poured in there. And... Uh, those are my presentations. So I thank you for viewing, and I thank the Makers Fair for letting me uh, do this for you. And, uh, well, there you go. that is my presentation. Thank you very much.